Recently, I played through Resident Evil 4 with the help of some friends to keep me from getting distracted by the fact that this is the 14th version of Resident Evil 4 because it released on literally every console known to man and also one other. The following is a completely accurate summary of the campaign. Trust me. The game begins with some people having a slumber party and doing normal sleepover activities like ritual sacrifice, and then it cuts to a vague montage about getting hired by President Cracker to, uh, oh, no, wait, no, I don't mean it like that. It's because his name is Graham, not because he's a white guy. Where was I? Right, there's a training montage, and then it fades into Leon getting a ride to the Spanish countryside because he can't be trusted behind the wheel. Leon's choice of conversation is to joke about coming out to the middle of nowhere to roast marshmallows, which is our first indication in this game that Leon is still an idiot that struggles with normal human interaction. Veteran Officer announces that he's got to take a leak and wanders off to his death, because if you're a character in a horror game that doesn't even have a name, then you've got literally no chance of survival. Speaking of which, Newbie Officer offers us a smoke, but Leon declines because everyone who smokes in this game also ends up dead. Coincidence? I think, yeah, well, actually, yeah, it's probably just a coincidence. Veteran officer hears a noise and decides the best course of action is to wander off in the direction of the noise by himself after he already warned Leon of mysterious disappearances because I guess everyone in this series is competing for the biggest dumbass award. And after he doesn't return for a while, Leon decides to go track him down. Leon takes a good long look at a dead deer and decides to continue onwards on his own because he's a strong independent dumbass who don't need no help, so he breaks into someone's house and then kills the owner after they try to defend themselves against a home invader. So Leon decides the next best course of action is to raid the basement for loot where he finds veteran cop dead who had also tried his hand at home invasion. Newbie cop starts screaming over the radio about how he's getting asked to move the car to avoid a parking ticket and the owner of the house wanders down because we didn't actually kill him, just left him horribly physically disabled. So we shoot him for good measure because Leon just doesn't like Spanish people. Instead of exiting through the front door, Leon decides to head upstairs and calls his handler about lakeside property in the area, but he was talking too loudly and caught the attention of the homeowner's roommates who showed up to chase him out, so Leon defenestrates himself out of a second story window and rolls it off like gravity is just a suggestion. We walk across a shoddily painted bridge and save our game on a random typewriter that was just sitting in some shack in the middle of nowhere in the Spanish countryside in 2004, you know, as they do, and find out that the crouch button is E for some reason, so we channel our confusion into roundhouse kicking some farmers on our way into town. We pick up a flash grenade just sitting around an old tool shed in the middle of nowhere in the Spanish countryside. I promise I'm only going to do this joke one more time, and if you played this game, then you know exactly when that is. And we John Marston some doors open and walk up to a button prompt that I thought was a picture of a PlayStation controller and not a pair of binoculars, because apparently I'm also competing for the biggest dumbass award. After watching Newbie Cop get burned alive for a parking violation, we test out Spain's policy on squatters' rights by claiming a house for ourselves and picking up a frag grenade that was just sitting on a shelf in a random house in the middle of nowhere in the Spanish countryside, and then greet our new neighbors with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Oh god. No! Ah, uh, fuck. Ah, yes. Bag of resources. <laughs> As people just have lying around, you know. Got my bag of resources lying on my desk over here. So it's assorted random rusty metals and things. Hello, Salvador. Shit. I have backed myself in the car. Please tell me this opens. It does. No! Fuck me! Oh, and now we gotta start all over. Fuck. They're just in every doorway. Yeah, I noticed. Oh, yes. Nope. Fucking move! Oh, what the hell? Oh my god. We listen to an Ernest Hemingway poem. No, oh, wait, I can't make references to literature that goes against the established channel canon that I don't know how to read. We listen to a Metallica song and everyone goes off to play bingo without inviting us because Leon's a racist that no one wants around. So we pick up a blue piece of paper introducing us to the brand new medial bullshit that they added in this remake, but that's a side mission and we're not doing those, even if they do give important rewards that I could trade for good loot. I will choose to nerf myself over doing a side mission. Just ask the Dying Light fans, they are still going on about it. After getting creamed by a furry, I, um... Mm. Open a gate and push a cart with no sense of haste, because there's definitely not a mob chasing me, so there's no reason for Leon to maybe pick up the pace a little bit. Leon decides jumping into a random basement is a good idea, and we come across a writhing bag, so in a continuing string of good ideas, he unties the bag, and it turns out that it's just some Spanish guy. Oh, okay. After a very ironic statement, which makes me think that this isn't actually just a coincidence, a really tall creepy guy walks up and Leon decides that now is a good time to ask questions first and shoot later, so he throws us across the room and knocks us unconscious and then drugs us, and somehow this doesn't turn into a porno. After having a bad dream, Ah, uh, old white man. Leon wakes up chained in a basement with a stranger, and I mean, come on, seriously. The stranger says his name is Inigo Montoya and that we killed his father, and we should prepare to check the script I'm reading because it's the wrong one. Oh. My name is Inigo Montoya, killed my father, prepare to die, suggests that Leon is probably into gay BDSM, which, given his conversation skills with women versus how he talks to Luis, would make a lot of sense. My name is Inigo Montoya, you killed my father, prepare to die, reveals to Leon that he knows that Leon is in the middle of nowhere Spanish countryside looking for a schoolgirl, and he knows where to find her, but their conversation is interrupted by another guy and three is a crowd, so they choke him to death because they forgot to tell him a safe word. My name is Inigo Montoya, you killed my father, prepare to die, takes the opportunity to free himself and run off, leaving Leon alone with his thoughts, which I imagine is like when you have nothing to watch on TV, so you just stare at static. Stealth! <laughs> <laughs>
Why can't I pick up the hatchets? I don't know, but it feels like it'd be much more efficient than a butter knife. Right? Stop! <laughs> or eat, or eat, or eat. Yeah, and you maybe want to pick up the pace just a little bit, you know, instead of just casually jogging. Oh, damn it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do that on purpose. Yay, all my stuff. I'll be taking the <laughs> also, like, 17 kitchen knives. <laughs> We meet Steven and buy some gear before getting a little lost looking for a fancy door handle in a tree fort. After putting in the fancy handle, we crank that soldier boy and find out that the AI in this game isn't actually very smart, so maybe Leon is a little less out of place than I thought. We're actually gonna engage in stealth, because I don't have enough health to fuck around right now. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Never mind. Stealth is off. Leon, crouch, please. Do they have... What if I just stay here? Can they do anything about that? <laughs> they don't have like a kick or anything that they can kick me out of this? I can just do this? <laughs> Does this count as breaking the game? After walking to our doctor's appointment and running straight into a tripwire, we interrupt a man on his bathroom break who kills us, which is fair, you don't interrupt a guy in his time of need. We open a door with moon logic and pick up a key, but before we can leave, we're trapped in the bedroom by a much larger man who knocks Leon on his back and steps on him and chokes him, and somehow this still isn't a porno. I mean, come on. Then a Chinese woman hanging outside the window shoots the large man in the face, which doesn't seem to hurt him, but he gets so distracted by the fact that that just happened that he decides to let us go and walks off. Okay, then. Gift? My blood? Did somebody come in my blood? Oh. <laughs> Why is that the first thought? <laughs> so many of the ways it could get in the blood. Minigan calls to let Leon know that she figured out who my name is Inigo Montoya because my father prepared to die is, and it turns out he actually worked for Rihanna, who was the bad guy in the previous games. Also, I know this has already happened a few times, but what's up with this UI element? It's literally just a rectangle stuck in the middle of the screen. I get the originals were like codec calls from Metal Gear Solid, but they decided to just copy Dead Space with none of the making sense in the world part. Have him pull out a Farnsworth or something, I don't know. Well, whatever, this isn't even a big deal or anything, it's just kind of a weird choice. We make our way outside and find a dog caught in a bear trap, so we choose to save her from Shia LaBeouf, but then this happens. Wait, what? <laughs> well, that was unexpected. <laughs> okay. All right, well, we saved the dog, guys. <laughs> you will save this dog. Unfortunately, that doesn't count towards saving the dog, so we won't show up again in the boss fight later. Probably for the best. After pushing open a gate, a clock tower tries to murder us as revenge for trying to kill a dog, but we manage to survive, so it's six an artist's approximation of what a dog looks like without a reference on us, and we run into another trip mine. Leon invades a church to try and prevent the Spanish Inquisition because he's not very up to date on history, and finds out that the town has a really fancy fog machine that keeps the place well spooked in case any visitors arrived and didn't think it was evil. Turns out that the church was just a smaller entry church for a bigger church a little further along, but unfortunately Spaniards are really into moon logic, so we've got to go find the door handle because Leon can't just climb up any of the walls. Or maybe he can, and he just really wants to respect the locals' convoluted door mechanisms. We find a map that says the key is somewhere across the lake in a cave with a box of scraps, so we head off to collect it. After finding a Metal Gear Solid reference at an inopportune time, we shoot our way through some more locals because Leon really doesn't like Spanish people. Was that the T-1000? What the hell was that? I probably could be using my shotgun because I have plenty of ammo for it now. But we just decided to stick with the pistol because I'm a genius. <laughs> Literally right as I put it, like, I'm a genius. I ran into that. We peep on some locals feeding the wildlife and make it to a boat, but it's out of gas and we don't have any on us, so we've got to go pick some up first. Did I mention already? I, I can't remember if I thought it and then didn't say it because I got interrupted. Okay. Well, we'll just keep getting interrupted while I'm trying to say things. Did you say hola? Hello to you too, buddy. Not bad, right? What are you talking to the snake, Leon? Mmm, <laughs> the cum wall. Why? Because <laughs> I'm a mature adult. Fuck you, Lake! Fuck you! I'm an American! I'M EXERCISING MY SECOND AMENDMENT! HOLY SHIT! <laughs> you fuckers! You knew that would happen! That's why you told me to shoot the lake! Chat tricked me! <laughs> you fuckers! I thought they were just like, yeah, shoot the water, it's a funny gag! <laughs>
We filled the boat with the boat fuel that we definitely couldn't have used to fuel anything else, which is why it's specifically labeled boat fuel, and pilot the boat across the lake. But it craps out almost immediately, and we get attacked by the giant fish monster from earlier and go through a stupid boss fight just in case you forgot that this was a remake of a game from 2005. The fish monster drags you around for a while, and you throw an infinite amount of harpoons at it, and then when it isn't dragging you around, you throw some harpoons at it. That's it. That's the entire boss fight. After Captain Ahab being the fish monster, no, wait, I, that's another literary reference, and this time it's not even correct, because Captain Ahab didn't kill the whale, I just uh, don't have a replacement gag line for this line, so. After fish death, Leon coughs up his PB&J sandwich from lunch because he forgot he was allergic to the crust and passes out on the boat. Leon wakes up from his anaphylactic nap and gets a call from Hoonigan, who reveals that he's been unconscious for three hours, which is really bad for you, but probably won't affect Leon much, considering he rarely uses critical thinking skills anyways. After meeting and deleting some tentacle hentai, we do some spelunking and find a puzzle that we can't solve with anything in the immediate vicinity. So we've got to take a detour across the lake for a while to get some heads so it'll open up. We collect a church key and get a little lost trying to find our way back, and then an SCP-1471 cosplayer, which is a reference that I really wish I didn't know, interrupts our backtracking to introduce us to a boss that's actually a real boss this time and not a glorified Disney ride. Congratulations, your dog evolved into a big fucking problem. After opening the door to the church and giving a quick sermon, Welcome to my sermon. Today we'll be talking about why regular, widely accepted game mechanics are actually all shit, and you should not use them in your game. Topic one, reloading. Topic two, sprinting. <laughs> we logic some more moon puzzles and find, hey wait, this is just a regular girl. I was told she was going to be a little mouse. Leon and Leon help share a dream about cheese, and the locals decide that 4am is a good time to start a church procession, but Leon doesn't fear God, just women, so he jumps out a window. It's okay, I've got you. Hey, trust me. We let Hoonigan know that we found Leon help, and she says she'll send Mike to come pick us up, but considering there's 10 more hours of game to go, I'm not so sure that's gonna happen. We get a pop-up tutorial on how to make Ashley Titan loose, uh, okay, and then struggle to deal with the church crowd for a bit, and if you've ever worked in the food industry on a Sunday, you'll know what a bitch that can be. After finally channeling Brave Sir Robin, we take Leon help shopping in town, but then Leon remembered that he hates Spanish people, so we murder everyone instead. We get chased across a bridge, but luckily my name is Inigo Montoya, he killed my father, prepared to die, his Airbnb is on the other side, so he lets us come inside, and Leon confronts him about working for Rihanna. Leon help introduces herself to my name is Inigo Montoya, he killed my father, prepared to die, and Leon congratulates everyone for having a name, which might be my favorite line from this game. My name is Inigo Montoya, he killed my father, prepared to die, says that it's game time, which it is, and then we defend the area with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Ah. Oh my god! <laughs> Works for me! I got aim better. I am on fire. Ah, oh, crap, and this is gonna start me all the way over, isn't it? Oh, there you go, and keep attaching mines. Okay. Ah, oh, fuck me. Oh, I'm really like a rifle. Leon! I can't cancel a fucking reload animation, so he just sits there and reloads and then I die. Oh, beautiful. What's the point loading each individual bullet if I can't cancel the fucking animation? And I'm dead. Holy shit, this part's hard. God, I feel like I'm using 110% of my brain power. And still, it's not enough. After turning a local into a Spanish sandwich, everyone catches their breath, and Leon Help reveals that she too is allergic to bread crust. So my name is Nino Montoya, kill my father, prepare to die, warns them the only cure is to get a cool scar, but only by doing really sketchy experimental surgery on yourself. My name is Nino Montoya, kill my father, prepare to die, meets up with a distractingly phoned in voice actor, and because she did a poor job voicing a character in a video game, the next best course of action is to send the actress threats on social media because that is definitely a normal and well-adjusted sane person thing to do. What the fuck is wrong with some people? Lily Gao didn't shoot your dog. I did that. No, wait, that's not the lesson we should be taking away from this. Surprise, Hoonigan calls to let us know that Mike is delayed because of the weather, and then I spend some time trying to figure out if he can reload cancel weapons like the shotgun or the rifle since you can load each bullet individually, and as far as I can tell, you just can't, which is by far the worst thing in this entire game, unless you can actually reload cancel and I'm just too stupid to figure it out, in which case this criticism can be disregarded and you can correct me in the comment section and call me an idiot. We try our hand at stealth, and that goes about as well as you'd expect, so after mowing down someone's extended family, we force Leon help to hide in a locker, and Leon goes to pick up a red cylinder. But two chainsaws burst through the wall and he decides the best course of action is to kick off the wall for a backflip to remind the audience that this game is still campy as hell and that Leon's still an idiot. That's like two of my favorite things. Ridiculous shit that everyone but the characters know is ridiculous and a protagonist that is somehow competent despite being an absolute fucking moron. I'm not kidding, I love that stuff. 
After refusing a shave and a haircut, we take the two bits we saved and crank that soldier boy again and run into this guy again, who I forgot to give a name, but at this point it's not worth it because we kill him in the next scene after a stupid boss fight that just evolves into one of those carnival games where you shoot cutouts with a BB gun. Just in case you thought they'd redesign these fights to be, you know, good. Um, what? Did the game fucking bug out on me? Was I supposed to be able to hit him there and then it just didn't give it to me? After killing full Scorpion, Ashley breaks a window for us like we wouldn't have just jumped through the glass pane regardless, and we storm a castle only to get trapped inside, but luckily my name is Inigo Montoya, kill my father, prepare to die, is also hanging around inside the castle for... whatever reason. We get exploded by flaming rocks for a while and take revenge with the world's only auto-loading medieval cannon and invent a new door by removing the old door. And then I decide to sell all my remaining handgun ammo to buy the revolver, which I'm pretty sure I used like four times throughout the rest of the game. Now it's time to meet Mondo Bizarro, who's looking a little more like a creepy little man instead of a creepy little elf child, which makes a little more sense, I guess. I mean, why was he a child in the original anyways? And now it's time for a fight, which goes surprisingly well considering I started it with pretty much no ammo. Looks like Mondo Bizarro goes to the same Halloween store for his smoke machine, too. Leon gets startled by loud foreshadowing and we fall through the floor to meet a Wolverine cosplayer who really doesn't like it when you have opinions about Marvel properties, positive or otherwise. After telling the cosplayer to touch grass, we crank that soldier boy to get back to Leon help and squeeze through an 8th gen wall crack, but it turns out that's the wrong way, so we squeeze back through the 8th gen wall crack and then climb a ladder to another moon logic door. We find another Metal Gear Solid reference and I make a joke that just turns out to be true. Can I eat the snake? Oh, you can eat the snake. <laughs> I was joking about eating the snake, but you, yeah, you can use it to restore health. Leon jumps across the chandelier because he's a well-adjusted sane human being, and even the game knows that's weird. I can excuse fighting a giant monster scorpion man, but I draw the line at jumping across chandeliers. Mono Bizarro calls to let us know that he set up a show just for us, but it's full of Spanish people and Leon's still racist, so we murder everyone with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Watch out! Did I just shoot her? After Leon takes a stupid amount of time to start crossing a bridge, we watch Leon help Bob and weave through a crowd of enemies like it's nothing just to prove that she could be avoiding getting kidnapped repeatedly, but maybe she just likes getting carried. And then she just kidnaps herself. This isn't what people mean about being a strong independent woman, Ashley. We wander in on a DJ performing a set, but his music is shit, so we murder him and his fans because Leon's a music snob and exclusively listens to emo rock. Leon gets spooked by a window and surprised by phoned in, who implies that she'll have sex with him if he chooses to abandon the president's daughter. Ada, what the fuck are you talking about? And then she just leaves us to our moon logic puzzle that I almost had to look up a guide for because who in their right mind is going to recognize that the thing that we're looking for is the square or hexagon bit inside of the tablets. I got it eventually, but like, that's the most esoteric puzzle of this entire game. We're introduced to an enemy type that's just a spider backpack, and that's about it. Okay. After going through some gate puzzles, we meet another giant that's wearing some armor, but we're the fashion police, so we shoot him in the head and then blow a door into a door, but get jumped by the giant who doesn't agree with our guilty verdict, but he's not a very good climber, so he falls away to be stored for later. We find Leon help sulking on a bench, so Leon tries to cheer her up by telling her to give him a hand job, and then the game fades to black, so you can't prove to me that that didn't happen. My name is Nino Montoya, kill my father, prepare to die, calls us to let us know that he's in trouble, so we head off to help him, but then get lost in a hedge maze for a little while. After finding a triple headless statue, we head off to rule of three some heads for the statue, which constitutes getting jumped by suits of armor, acting like an idiot at a dinner party, and failing an easy grenade throw. After putting all the heads on, a door opens, but Leon gets trapped, so Leon help runs off to help Leon. And now it's time for the shitty play as the second character section, except it's actually not shitty. You're allowed to do that? You're telling me that all the times that other games did this shit and it was a fucking slog and a half that could have actually been good? Damn you, Spider-Man. Is that not 1104? Did it need to be... Like more precise than that? Oh, you're right. <laughs> I forgot. I, I haven't looked at an analog clock in a while. But the small hand is the hour and the big hand is the minutes. <laughs> I know how to read a clock, I promise! I'm a millennial, basically. Technically, I'm Gen Z, but, you know, I'm 25. I'm like the tail end of millennial. This guy is really glitched out. I don't think that door is supposed to be closed on him. <laughs> Yeah, this guy's definitely not behaving correctly. <laughs> Will he just sit here and do this infinitely if I just stay here? Alright, well. We'll leave him to his own devices. What happens if I do what I did earlier, where I just, like, hang out in the gap? Will they still be able to get me? No, they seem very confused. This happened earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can't get me. After catching back up to Leon, Leon help tosses him a key, and then she gets kidnapped again. Great. Cut to phoned in, phoning in her progress with a mysterious person, definitely not Wesker, when she notices Leon help getting kidnapped. So she calls up Leon to let him know where she's headed, just in case he wants to save her, but why did she do that? 
She just told him to abandon her like an hour ago. Did she already have a change of heart? And now it's time for giant bugs, oh boy. They're just as bad as you remember. We enter a room with two Wolverine cosplayers, and honestly, the section wasn't that bad. I was led to believe it was going to be a lot worse. We catch up to Ashley, who's going through normal teenage girl slumber party things, like drinking blood and demonic possession, and we want to be part of it, so we get ritual sacrificed, and then realize that means we're going to miss the pillow fight. Talk about sticking the landing. I think that was worse than this being a jump scare. After crawling through the bug-infested sewers, we have a mild brain aneurysm and decide to chill for a bit and then hang out with the Xenomorph while we wait for the world's slowest elevator. We take an elevator and watch the Xenomorph pop into existence in front of us and then have a bad dream about an old white man again. But our dream is interrupted by my name is Inigo Matoyi, kill my father, prepare to die, who's got some epinephrine that he promises he won't charge hundreds of dollars for because he's not American. My name is Inigo Matoyi, kill my father, prepare to die, makes a reference to a book that I have to pretend I don't recognize so I don't alienate my audience and picks up a lance. But Leon's a buzzkill and doesn't let him keep it because a metal pipe isn't nearly as good at deflecting attacks as Leon's knife, which is simultaneously the world's strongest knife and also extremely breakable because this game has fucking knife degradation as a mechanic. I know why they added it, but why did they fucking add it? After being forced to play the shooting gallery, even though we already did that with Mendez earlier, we come across a dead end that we definitely could just blow up with a grenade, but we've got to go get a bunch of TNT instead because everyone knows that wood is surprisingly resilient to fragmentation, but not nitroglycerin. I'm also finding out that dynamite and TNT are two entirely different things and that TNT does not contain nitroglycerin at all, so congratulations, we all learned something today. A Willy Asso video? Educational? The channel must be going downhill. This is the second learning experience we've had in a cast. I didn't make this series to learn new things, damn it. I made it to gaslight people into thinking that I don't know what I'm talking about and make money that I can spend on tacos without having to wait for a Tuesday. Where was I? Oh, right, TNT. It's not dynamite. ACDC was lying to you. Trust me. Leon kicks open a vent and gets grabbed by the giant from earlier who's pissed that we're fucking with his air conditioning while he's trying to hang out with his Tinder date, so we murder them and then reenact the minecart scene from Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. Wait, what? Turns out the track is out and the break is broke, so they soar across the chasm and jump out and survive because the plot says so. We go to take an elevator, but the bridge falls and we decide to go the long way around instead of just jumping across because it's really not that far of a distance. I think they could have made that. Also, the bugs are back in town. Yay. We take an elevator and my name is Nino Montoya, kill my father, prepare to die, admits that he's been helping Leon because he feels bad about helping the bad guys, and as they exit, he gets stabbed in the back by Doogie Krauser. Leon has a goofy-ass knife fight with Doogie Krauser that looks more like they're slap fighting each other than anything else, and then we go through a really stupid parry fight that's janky as fuck, but at least it's not full of really shitty QTEs like the original, just a couple of normally shitty QTEs. My name is Nino Montoya, kill my father, prepare to die, chases Doogie Krauser off and has a death scene, and it's actually kind of sad because he's a well-written character with a good character arc in this remake, and not just a punchline that gets stabbed by an old man scorpion penis. I'm not joking, that's what happened in the original. We take an elevator and get a call from phone in again who points us to the clock tower to save Leon Helps. So we take a tram to Mondo Pizarro who applauds us for not being dead and that's really something I needed in my life, you know? It feels good for someone to want to celebrate me being alive. Did that just get too real? We get set on fire by that crazy robot statue from the original, but luckily it doesn't chase us across a bridge in this one, it just turns us into toast. We take the world's slowest lift with absolutely no problems whatsoever. There you go. Can I get rid of him? Nope. That was the cutest little toss ever. Yeah, Leon tosses grenades like a child. I threw a lot of rocks as a kid, so like, I think I'm qualified to speak on how a child would probably throw grenades. I threw a lot of grenades as a kid, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so your, your experience <laughs> clearly trumps mine. <laughs> you know, my parents were not very responsible, but I ended up a YouTuber. <laughs> what? what? Okay. And then die on some scaffolding because there weren't enough plants or birds or rocks or things for Leon to consume for health. Also, you're not allowed to sprint on the scaffolding. We catch up to Mondo Pizarro, but Leon's done listening to exposition, so he just shoots him a few times, but unfortunately, he turns into a giant monster that looks like the thing that ends up in my toilet after a night of bad Mexican food. After getting my ass kicked a couple of times, I buy a rocket launcher, and the merchant criticizes my choice, but what does he know? He doesn't suck at the game like I do, alright? If you've never played Resident Evil 4 before, the rocket launcher is a one-shot kill. As in, beta skipped a boss fight. It's a one-time use, though, because I guess Leon isn't smart enough to know how to reload a rocket launcher. He's not smart enough to know that an RPG doesn't have recoil either, so I guess that checks out. We see Doogie Krauser piloting a boat with Leon help off to an island, so we commandeer a boat. But phone in has the key, and... What, was she just waiting here to dramatically reveal that she had the key? Leon says that he's got a question, but he won't get a straight answer, and then he doesn't get a straight answer, so phone in tells him not to think too hard about it, and he admits that's pretty much exactly how he lives his life. We watch Doogie Krauser manhandling Leon help, and then get through the section with absolutely no problems whatsoever. We find Ashley in a holding cell, but she's taking a nap, so we decide to explore the entire compound for some key cards because someone decided that you can only upgrade your clearance at separate individual computer terminals scattered around instead of one simple place. 
After getting a hug from a guy who was just casually waiting for us in a closet while he was on fire, we do some terminal puzzles that I only vaguely understood, but I completed them relatively quickly every time, so maybe my eyes see something that my brain doesn't. And now we meet the regenerator things of this game, which I can't really beat until a little later, so I'm mostly just going to get bullied by it for a while. This part goes on for a while because I get lost quite a bit. Please tell me I wasn't the only one that couldn't figure out that you were supposed to shoot open these purple tanks to collect a wrench that was inside one of the monsters because I accidentally skipped the important hint that explains exactly what to do and didn't notice the wrench in the monster's chest while I was testing out the skill. I promise I'm not Aaron Hansen. I promise. After collecting the wrench of shame, I upgrade my keycard to the final level, but since this is a 90s ass computer, it's going to take a while, so the game sends me some friends to keep me company. This is why I'm an introvert. We catch back up to Leon help, but she's unconscious, so we stab her with a pen because Leon doesn't understand that you're supposed to draw a dick on her forehead, not fucking stab her. Also, he casually just does the coolest round check I've ever seen, and then never again. After Leon Help wakes up, Leon calls phone in to ask where the Don't Be Sick Anymore lab is, so she points us in the direction, and Leon Help makes a reference to the first game, and we head off in said direction with absolutely no problems whatsoever. We go through what feels like the world's longest holdout section, while Leon Help pursues her newfound passion of slamming balls into walls and wait for an elevator so that we can take an elevator up to some rock candy. You know, the kind that they put bugs in and that everyone's seen but no one's ever actually tried. The old white man shows up and introduces himself as Sadler, but I hardly know her. That might be the worst joke I've told so far, and I really do make an effort to write some really shitty jokes. Dr. Lazarus commands Leon help to shoot Leon, but luckily the gun jams because Leon is the main character, and to be honest, this is probably the tamest plot contrivance they've come up with in the series for a main character to survive getting killed. I'm looking at you, Ethan Winters. Anyways, after Dr. Lazarus walks off with Leon help, we chase after them but get sidetracked by Doogie Krauser again, and this really feels like a boss fight left over from a Metal Gear Solid game. At least until he transforms into Alex Mercer, and then it just sucks. The drawbridge gets raised, and we have to go through a boss fight that's mostly just QTEs against a bullet sponge that won't shut the fuck up and has a bunch of command grabs, because everyone loves command grabs. I should have saved up for another rocket launcher. After killing Doogie Krauser, the drawbridge magically lowers because I guess he just had a garage door opener in his pocket or something. And now Mike has arrived, who provides just a little amount of air support, enough to kill like one enemy, but not enough to actually be helpful. Mike opens up the next path and gets chased off by the world's worst anti-aircraft turret, considering it can't take down a helicopter that's like right in front of it. And then we take out the AA gun with absolutely no problems whatsoever. After destroying the AA gun, we move on to the next really hard part. I get the feeling I'm a little under-equipped for these late game fights, though it never seems like I have any ammo for my good weapons anyways, so maybe this is just bull shit regardless. Unfortunately for Mike, he's a helicopter pilot in a video game, which means he was doomed to die. So he crashes and explodes, but that's okay, he'll be fine. Probably. And then I do some sneaking past bags full of regenerating enemies, and it's my crowning achievement because I actually did it on the first try and didn't disturb a single bag, despite my chat's lack of faith. Can't sneak this section my ass. I can sneak whatever I want to. <laughs> After slogging through a menagerie of no one's favorite enemy types, we catch up to Leon help but get stopped at the last moment by Dr. Lazarus, but before we can get turned into a monster, we're saved by Mike. Oh no, wait, it's just Ada. Oh. And now it's time for the slow walk part where we just press W for nearly two full minutes. Okay then. We play Missile Command on Leon Help's Parasite and then pass out before we can get on the chair, and then wake up cured because somehow Ashley got Leon on the chair by herself and I'm calling bullshit. You ever try to lift an unconscious person? According to the wiki, Leon's like 155 pounds and I have a hard time believing that she did this on her own unless she's secretly juicing and just hides it well. Then we find out that Sadler's full name is Adam Sadler. I can't believe my nickname game was beaten by the actual video game's real name for the character. Turns out phoned in tied herself up for Leon because they're both into BDSM, so he tells Leon help that he'll be back soon because he's a premature ejaculator, but surprise, Adam Sadler shows up to cockblock them, so phoned in turns into Spider-Man. Ada Wong, Ada Wong, does whatever an Ada Wong does. Adam Sadler turns into the final boss, but we've got a rocket launcher to skip this bullshit because... I missed. <laughs> I promise I'm not Aaron Hansen. After getting to phase two on the first try, you all saw it, this was the first try, we shoot Adam Sadler's eye out and stab him in the mouth. Then conveniently, the one thing that phoned in was looking for lands right next to Leon while this building-sized monster disintegrates off a cliff. And then she just leaves alone because Leon declined his only ride off the island like a fucking idiot. Leon Help is rightly confused about why she would just leave without them, and luckily for Leon, the island starts to explode so he doesn't have time to explain that he's a giant fucking moron, and then we just casually jog the warthog run. Aw, oh, fuck, and I was doing so well, too. Kill joy. After watching the island explode from a surprisingly close distance, Leon turns down Ashley's invitation to Bone Town because he's not a simp, and then they ride up into the sunset together in awkward silence and decide not to answer Hoonigan for some reason because I guess Leon really doesn't want to take a helicopter ride. And that's the end of the game. Well, except for the mid credit scene where it's revealed that phoned in's handler is Mr. Wears Sunglasses Indoors guy himself, Wesker, who she decides to turn on only after he announces that the evil thing that she grabbed for him would cause mass casualties because apparently it is just as fucking stupid as Leon and didn't think about this beforehand. Game over. 
but our dream is interrupted by my name is Dingo. But why did I decide to do this? But our dream is interrupted by my name is. But our dream is interrupted by my name. <laughs> I feel like I'm scatting. Turns out the track is out and the brake is broke. Turns out the track is out and the brake is broke. <laughs> Turns out the track is out and the brake is broke, so they soar across the chasm and jump across. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say brake is broke without sounding really southern. Turns out the track is out and the brake is broke, so <laughs> the brake is broke. <laughs> Why am I so southern? <laughs>